this is the Montpelier Public Schools Board of School Commissioners. We have been in executive session for the purpose of dis discussing uh, contract negotiations. We are now back in public session, and I would love to hear a motion to adjourn. So moved. Seconded. Seconded. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All righty. Over to Jim. Okay. So I uh, move to call to order uh, the um, Wednesday, January 17th, 2018 meeting of the uh, Las Vegas Rockefeller Public Schools Board, um, opening at 7.07 uh, p.m. And although uh, Board doesn't technically run the school yet. I do want to echo uh, what Michelle said at the opening mm -hmm. of the Montpelier Public School Board. That yesterday was uh, a very tragic and heartbreaking day for the school and the community. Um, uh, life was lost uh, very sadly, um, but I do want to express my my deep gratitude uh, to. Uh, everyone in the community, uh, and especially uh, the people at this table and this school who uh, worked so hard to make sure that uh, everyone was safe um, and that the, a very difficult situation was managed with, um, with, with real grace and calm. And I think we have uh, a lot of, of wonderful people uh, who really uh, you know, were, were heroes yesterday in terms of, of making sure the situation uh, was handled well, um, and you know, again, it's a it's a heartbreaking, heartbreaking moment for for the community. Um, and I know there's going to be uh, a lot of grief and further discussion. And uh, I just want to encourage uh, you know students and and faculty and teacher and everyone else who was was part of that very stressful day to to make sure that they uh, you know, reach out and, and talk to people if uh, you know they're they're feeling they need to. Uh, so again, thank you to everyone. And uh, um, yeah, it's, you cover your jobs. Uh, you know, not expecting these things, but uh, everyone really stepped up to the plate. And this is why uh, our teachers and principals and superintendents and uh, our amazing people. So thank you. Thank you. Uh, so the first item on the uh, agenda is public comments. So anyone, um, any comments from the public? We have a few in attendance. Uh, great, uh, moving on to item number three. Uh, we're going to uh, discuss and approve the FY19 budget. And I know we've done this a few times before. <laughs> uh, sometimes Brian starts, sometimes Grant starts. Grant's so gonna take Grant's this gonna one. take it this time. And uh, um, I'll give the, the table to, to Grant. Right, thank you. So tonight is a, an abbreviated version of the slides. I only um, am highlighting the things that changed since last week. So we bypassed the um, district overview slides, which basically you know, cuts this in about a third. So here's the outline of what we will discuss. Um, so a much shorter list. And I'll just go right into the changes. Not many changes. Um, unexpectedly, I got notification of a few announced tuition rates for career centers, uh, specifically a, an increase in Barry, which I didn't know was coming. Um, so I did have time since I got that notice to roll in their higher tuition rate into the budget so that we won't have a, you know, finish under budget in that line. So I increased career center tuition $7,200. Um, we discussed at the board meeting last week to reduce the, the amount of the bond, which reduced the bond interest in year one by about $5,600. Um, I got the updated small schools grant number, which I alluded to last week. So that was an increase in revenues of about 8,000. So you can see there's a very small changes. Um, whenever I recalculated the tax rates, it didn't change the tax rates. It wasn't significant enough to. But those are the changes from last week. And we'll spend more time probably on the bond slides than any others. So the at-a-glance slide, what's in green are the numbers that changed. The operating budget a little bit higher because of uh, career center tuition. The bond, proposed bond line is a little lower. It was 123, now it's 118. And the non-tax revenues is a little higher because of the small schools grant. That's why those are highlighted in green. 
So uh, on the expense side, this slide is just used to show the number that I'm tracking to, which is that 23084, 695. Um, the pie chart didn't really change, I think. Tech center tuition was enough to go up one tenth of a percent, but the other numbers didn't change. And this slide, you can't really see the difference in. The program expenses detail. The only number that's really highlighted at all is the career center tuition line, which changed. All the other numbers are the same as they were. So just wanted to be transparent in showing the changes, but they aren't real significant. On the revenue side, there's two highlighted areas. Uh, in green is the small schools grant, which, which is up from the last time and is very close to what we originally estimated. Um, what's in yellow is the transportation aid. I still don't have a number from the Agency of Education. But when I do get that number, I'm confident it's not going to be much different than this. And it wouldn't be enough to make a change to the tax rate anyway. So I think we're OK with going forward with the, with the budget with that one unknown. Uh, for the bond, so I expanded a little bit on the bond slides. Hopefully it's um, useful. I decided to start with a little bit of background to discuss kind of what Michelle had brought up that what's on this list are things that were on the long range plan and have been there for a while. We've done the preliminary work, so they're ready to go for a bond. Um, the second bullet is just an explanation about Main Street Middle School. Um, those are, we have projects, we have done projects, but the way we built this bond was to try to limit the number of locations so that we could get the highest value in negotiating contracts. Um, so once again, the less locations means less overhead, more value. Um, the sub bullet there for MSMS work is just highlighting the fact that we are not ignoring the middle school. We've spent about a million dollars, or will spend about a million dollars, between items that were taken care of from 2015 through what you uh, have seen previously in the capital plan for 2020. Um, the bathroom renovation that will happen uh, in the summer of 2019 is probably the same time that a lot of the work for the bond is going to happen. So the timing is the same. It's just those requirements are in different places just to try to be able to negotiate a better price. Um, the third bullet is talking about the fact that the board decided to reduce the bond by $145,000. So it is now 4.9 million. We assume we can absorb that 145 without changing the scope of the bond. Um, and the sub bullets kind of go into that. If we can save on general conditions by packaging all of the high school projects at one time in one contract, then we should have less mobilization supervision costs. Um, it would also allow us the most optimal time to get a competitive bid is January, February. So if we do the rest of the work that we need to do, hold until January of 2019, put that RFP out, we should get a really good price and we would be doing all the work next summer in one location at one time and get the biggest bang for the buck. So that is the hope. If we're still coming in high, then we could look at what's called value engineering, where we could decide if we could change some finishes, those kinds of things, just minor changes, but don't change the scope of the, of the projects. So that's the, um, the approach. I also have on this side slide the estimated FY19 um, interest cost of $118,000. And that amount, just as a reminder, is part of the budget already and part of the tax rate calculation. So it's already in there. In FY20, uh, it shows what the principal and interest amount is. You can see 391. I believe that number was um, oh. 405, something like that. So that number came down as well. Um, and then this is a, a different breakout of the projects. Um, if you remember last time, there were about, I think, five or six lines. So we broke it out a little bit to give a little more insight into what these, pro these projects are, especially on the high school side. I think the union elementary projects are the same as what they looked like before. But we broke out auditorium, um, 
which was already broken out separately, but um, it included some other pieces like roof replacement, which we decided, you know what, let's take the roof mm -hmm. replacement pieces from the gym lobby, uh, I'm sorry, gym and locker room and the <coughs> auditorium and just capture that as roof replacements and get a cost for that. The lobby restrooms was buried in, I think, the gym and locker room project before, so we broke that out separately so you could see that. Um, heating and ventilation was part of the gym, which is really part of the whole space that we're talking about. So I think this is a more accurate and understandable way to break out the projects so that, so that people know what's in there. Um, and of course, the total now is 4.9 million as opposed to the 5.045. The next few slides go into a little more words uh, about each of those line items. Um, nothing changed on this slide for the union projects. Those are what was there last week, and I'm sure you're very familiar with those. For the high school side, there's a couple of slides now that break this out. Auditorium renovation. Um, I think we've already talked about what is included in that. The wellness center, training room, and storage. So that's broken out separately and you can see kind of what that's talking to. I did try to put in here some associations with kind of a, the driving force behind some of these things like safety, access, um, access meaning um, one of the weight rooms is on the second floor so it's not handicap accessible. Um, so those are some issues. Personalization is because um, this would allow for uh, personal wellness courses, uh, which are wholly personalized PE classes. Um, the training room and storage, that's self-explanatory. Storage would go up on the second floor so we wouldn't have to worry about accessibility. That would just be staff that would be um, utilizing that. Uh, the locker rooms, as well as some offices and the family restroom, which is accessible from the hallway um, and would be a nice added touch for when you have, you know, basketball games, those kinds of things. Um, so you can see, refigures the locker room space, which is safety and equity because it's a very large space with a lot of blind corners, so it's more easily supervised. And from an <coughs> equity perspective, there will be more, um, there's not going to be what's referred to as a gang shower. There will be personal shower spaces, personal areas for restrooms uh, with, with stalls, uh, changing areas. So it's not all out in the open. Um, so I think from an equity perspective, it's more user friendly. Um, phys ed and athletic director offices are redone. A multi-purpose space with a bathroom, so that could be used for officials or any faculty member that, um, as a matter of fact, we were talking about um, lactation space perhaps, those kinds of things. Um, and there is a ski storage area, which we currently have, it's just relocated. And the family restroom will be gender neutral, um, like I said, right off the hallway, kind of across from the, the, the lobby bathrooms. <coughs> Classrooms, we talked about this a little bit. Um, there's gonna be a classroom on the PE side, which can be used for PE classes, health classes, team meetings, or other requirements as they pop up. Um, another classroom will be a, on the hallway, that hallway across from the auditorium, which can be used for classroom space, um, and it also can be used for as a green room for performances. Um, the lobby restrooms, you all know that those are in dire need of renovation. Uh, so I don't need to go into that. Roof replacement. If anybody's confused about the fact that we have roof replacement in the general budget, and then I'm showing roof replacement here, it's different segments of the roof. Mm -hmm. in, the ca in the general budget, we have basically the hallways, over the hallways, that big area done, and over by the uh, superintendent's office. These areas are directly above the gym and locker room, directly above the auditorium. And those are also at the end of their useful life. But they will be associated with the project because as the project's done, they may be going through the ceiling, punching holes in for ventilation, that kind of thing. So it makes sense to do the roof at the same time as those projects. And then the heating uh, and ventilation, most of that 
equipment is original to the building, so obviously it doesn't have variable, variable speed engines, those kinds of things. So it would definitely improve efficiency and comfort uh, and is something that all of those items obviously are at the end of their, beyond the end of their useful life as well. So we're on borrowed time with those. Um, I'm gonna just power through the last few slides and then we can have any questions that you might have. Tax rates are still on here just because some of the numbers changed, you know, the expense budget, the, bu the bond, and the revenues. But as you can see, the bottom line numbers, the bottom line tax rates are exactly the same as they were last week. The changes were not significant enough to change the tax rate. Residential tax rate impacts are the same, obviously, since the tax rate didn't change. Non-residential didn't change, and as a reminder, these are not dependent on the budget. So Grant. they wouldn't change. Grant, I know we've all seen this six times now, but if people are just tuning in for the first time, would you mm -hmm. mind going back to the tax rate slide just to make sure we... The for, calculation slide? Yeah, for folks who are seeing this for the first time. Sure. So I'm Sorry. No, no problem. So this presentation, along with all the other budget presentations, is on the MPS website under uh, Board of School Commissioners, and you'll see a drop down that says FY19 budget. So all these briefings are posted, including mm -hmm. this one. And if you see the slide, you'll notice that to the left, you'll see the, you know, the signs, whether it's plus, equals, divided by. So this walks you through how the tax rate is calculated. So it's the operating budget um, plus the capital plan, which is being proposed this year, plus the bond, which is the first year interest payment. That then equals your total general fund budget, which will be on the budget article. So the budget article will be 23-452-706 if the board adopts tonight. Um, you take out non-tax revenues, things like special education revenues, um, facility use, and then you end up with what's called education spending. That education spending is divided by your number of pupils to get spending per pupil, and that is what basically calculates into the tax rate. You take that, divide it by the dollar yield, which is a statewide figure, and you come up with your um, equalized residential tax rate. That is one equalized tax rate for both Roxbury and Montpelier. And then uh, what makes it different between the two communities is one, um, uh, how do I explain this? Mm -hmm. uh, there is, in the statute, there's a limit when you merge that tax rates can't go down by more than 5%. So that's why Roxbury's tax rate is highlighted in blue because it is capped at a decrease of 5%. If it wasn't for that, then the equalized tax rate for both communities would be identical. And the only difference then would be when you d divide by the common level of appraisal, which is how much houses are worth in the communities. Um, so that's how we calculate the tax rate. That's why there are still two. Um, well, and there always will be two because of the CLA. But at some point, there will be one equalized rate for both communities. Um, so that is the tax rates. Um, on the next slide, I take those tax rates for Montpelier and for Roxbury and show the impact. And you can see it's just you know, looking at if your house value is 100,000, 200, or 300,000, um, and it basically just shows how much your tax rate would increase or decrease. So for every $100,000 in property value, um, a Montpelier resident will pay $43 more than they are this year. That's 2.6% increase. I think it's 2.6. It is. Yeah, yeah, it is. Um, for Roxbury, it's uh, it's twenty-five dollars less for every hundred thousand, which I think is one and a half percent decrease. And the note that we've been highlighting at the bottom here is that most people in the state of Vermont do receive an income sensitivity credit. So those those impacts that I'm I'm referring to are basically worst case scenario because if you receive an income sensitivity credit then your impact would be even lower than that. When you said that this was on the website, is this newest one up yes. on the website? Thank you. Yes, posted it right before I came here. Non-residential tax rates, um, we show it, but it does not relate to the budget at all. That is very much 
easier math to do. There's a statewide non-residential rate of $1.629. It's divided by the common level of appraisal in each community, and that's it. So the budget could be a million dollars higher, a million dollars lower, it doesn't matter. The non-residential tax rate is what this chart shows. Um, and it is a fairly significant increase um, based on the statewide base rate. And I should say that both the dollar yield and the non-residential base rate are the best guess that we have right now, mm -hmm. but they could change because those are set by law, um, but they won't change between now and town meeting day. And these are the numbers the tax commissioner has proposed. So um, we believe this is as good as it is. Um, the outlook slide hasn't changed, but it's just another reminder of kind of what we're looking at. We're not just looking at FY19 tax rates. We're trying to figure out how we can stabilize tax rates well into the future, especially given that the tax incentive of the merger um, decreases by two cents every year. So as that tax incentive drops, we need to figure out ways to either increase other revenues or decrease expenses to try to stabilize that tax rate so that we're not seeing large increases every year from now until, you know, for the next four years as this phases out. Um, and in that light, um, you can see some expenditures. We're talking about tracking some of these decreases that we're going to see. Um, grade 9 through 12 tuition for Roxbury students who are grandparented. Every year, there's going to be less students that are going to be um, have school choice and more students that will be in our schools, so we won't be paying that tuition. We increased one-time facilities projects significantly this year in the budget. Those one-time facilities projects can come out in future years. Um, it helped us to take care of some deferred maintenance, but it also helped us to build in some expenses that we know we could strip away in the future. Um, bond expenditures, uh, the existing bonds are pretty level as this mentions. The new bond will create a large increase in 20, but then every year after FY20, it will go down as interest goes down. So what we're tracking right now is looking forward to FY20. How can we reduce expenses to um, offset the two cent tax incentive drop and the increased bond? And we think we're, we're there. We think we have a good plan to keep the tax rates stable. But, uh, the budget summary hasn't changed. 1.3% increase in per pupil spending. I will warn you that when you see the budget article, you won't see that 1.3% in per pupil spending because legally they wouldn't consider us to be able to compare because we didn't exist last year. So we've done the math and looked at Roxbury plus Montpelier equals X and then compared to FY19. But legally, since we didn't exist as an entity, there won't be that reference that you're used to that says an increase in education spending of whatever percent. There'll be some note in there saying there can't, we can't do it because we didn't exist. Uh, residential tax rates increased 2.6% in Montpelier, decreased 1.5% in Roxbury. Um, like I said, based on final equalized pupil counts, I think we're probably safe to take the words final in quotes out of there. We were concerned that at the last minute we might get a new number from the AOE. We kept getting new numbers last year. I think we're good on equalized pupil count. Once again, the dollar yield um, is set by law. The local common levels of appraisals are set, so that should be safe as well. So that's it. Um, the last slide is just giving you the numbers so that if somebody wants to make a motion, you can. Hopefully you're comfortable with this version of the presentation. But um, before you make that motion, I will turn it back over to you to see if there are any other questions or concerns. Yeah, thank you, Grant. Again, um, excellent presentation, very clear. Um, I really love the way it was laid out and the information presented. Um, very understandable and a good level of detail. Um, and I also uh, really appreciate the, the breakdown of the bond. <coughs> the breakdown, I think it, it uh, explains it a lot better um, and uh, gives a, a better picture of, of what's contemplated and, and what that, that money is, is intended for. Um, so with that, any, any discussion? Or, well, you probably need a, a motion. I want to make a motion. Um, we adopt the budget. 
I move to approve the FY19 budget as presented. Do I have a second? A second. Uh, discussion? This is a, just a motion on the budget, not the bond, right? Yes, just on the budget. Just on um, the budget. Well, Although the, the budget, budget includes, includes the bond, the interest for the bond at four. But we have to separately. But we, don't we have to do two motions, one for the budget and one for the bond? For example, I, I no, would think so. one think so. for the budget and one for the articles, right. one yeah. of which is the bond. Right. Yeah. So we don't have to separately approve the bond. Let's, let's separately approve. Let's separately approve the bond. Yeah. Doesn't doesn't. The budget and then the articles. I I can't. It can't get us in trouble. <laughs> no. It might not be required, but it can't get us in trouble. Um, I think in the past we've just approved the articles, honestly. That's okay. That's yeah. I saw a hand motion. Well, I was just suggesting we uh, we could approve the bond, then the budget, then the articles, articles if we wanted to go through that detail. Okay. Um, well, we already have a motion. You have a motion on the table. A motion right. on okay. the table for the for the for budget. The budget. Uh, is there we, further discussion? Is there further discussion? Can we table that and then do the bond, or? Oh, I was going to say. So we were back to my question of does that motion include the bond? And so now you're saying no. That's a budget. Item. It includes so, money for, for the, the bond, bond, but it doesn't include the bond. Okay, got it. Um, I. Do I we just get want to know if we're if making we three votes. Is there a concern that people want to do one in before the other? I mean, uh, I mean, it's not clear to me whether we're just talking procedure or if there are substantive concerns that people want to talk about Thank you. one I agree. Yeah. Yes. first and then the other. I'd like to separate them, the budget and the bond, but I don't care what order you go in. And I, oh, when if I say I don't care, I don't think it makes any difference. If we're going to separate them, we should do the bond Let's first. Let's do the bond first. Um, so do we have to make a formal motion to table your Or can she withdraw it? Is that allowed? Or can you, huh? She's not allowed to just withdraw it for now. Uh, I don't know. Are you allowed to just withdraw it's it? It's moved and seconded. seconded. Um, <coughs> we could. Let's make a motion. Do someone want to make a motion to table? Yeah, I'm sure we can table it. Then we just come back. It'll be a coached motion at some point anyway. I move we table Michelle's motion. A second? <laughs> second. All those in favor? Uh, I make a motion. Oh, sorry. Okay. And I make a motion that we approve the four point nine million dollar bond. Offers. A second. Second. Okay. Discussion. I think All the presentation favor? is improved. Uh -huh. I think the presentation is improved. Great. Yes. All those in favor. Aye. 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 Opposed. <coughs> Now, Michelle, now that we've pulled your motion back, you want to put it back on the table for us? Um, is that my job? I think that's uh, my job. Sorry, it can't be your job. I'm offering, I'm offering it to you. I'm just checking. <laughs> What's the procedure for untabling a motion? I don't know. Uh, I, think, yeah, I think it's the chair. But, um, the chair that puts it back on? I think, I believe so. You would run the meeting, so. Okay. Um, can I just you unilaterally can put, just it back put her on motion the back on the table? Okay, Michelle's motion is back on the table. It has been seconded. It has been seconded. Further discussion. So further discussion. All those in favor. Aye. Aye. Opposed. I oppose. And I wish to say I oppose only because since we are asking the community to uh, approve a bond, which will cost a good deal of money. I think we should have been really conservative in our budget, and I feel that adding the equivalent of eight full-time people for only 40 new children is not conservative. Thank you. Uh, we need a motion to approve the articles, correct? Yes. There's a typo in there, the fourth line. Yes, yeah. Michelle caught yes, that as well. Yes. We will fix that typo. Instead of it, it should say is. I apologize. And just as clarification, these articles will not be labeled A, B, C, right. and D. They will be whatever the numbers are. Mm -hmm. um, for each municipality. On the, on the ballots. Right. And there will be, also for a point of clarification, there will be um, articles to vote for a school district clerk, a school district moderator, and a school district treasurer. 
which need to happen one more time. Do we have to approve those mm -hmm. at some point? No. Okay. I move that we correct the typo on the articles. Second. Uh, I'm just going to go straight to a vote. <laughs> All those in favor? Can I ask a question quick uh, first, Jim? Oh, we see our discussion. About the typo? Really? I'm assuming no, not the typo. I had that one too. I'm assuming that it's worded correctly, but so Article B starts off, you know, shall the school district approve the school board to incur the bond indebtedness? Is it the board or the district? It's the board. It is the board. Yeah, this yeah. was checked by our attorney. I kind of assumed as yep. much, but I just wanted yep. to make. Yeah. We'll be debiting it. It's yours. <laughs> <laughs> the nine of you will divvy it up. <laughs> Good luck with that. <laughs> and what is in bond font has to be in bond. It's bold. In bold, sorry. Uh, bond. bond font. What's, font. what's in bold font here. has to be bolded right. per um, statute. Statute. Okay. statute so. And then another quick kind of semantic question. The conclusion of Article C, um, the school commissioners for the purpose of operating the school, Yep. We have multiple schools. It's not school district there. We, we checked that as well. It yeah. was vague, but it carries, it carries the weight for all of the schools. Okay. okay. Thank you. That's all I have. Yeah. <coughs> so any further discussion about what the meaning of is is? <laughs> oh, boy. Uh, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Um, we did it. And we can approve motion. the actual articles. Yes. <laughs> I move to approve the articles to be warned for town meeting day. Second. 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 Somewhere. Right. Um, any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Excellent. Well, congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. Congratulations. And before I leave you, I just wanted Wait. to say thank you very much. I know going through the same information has been trying, but I appreciate your uh, your work. And I, I just got to say thank you, Grant. Yeah. You were amazing. Every time we open our mouth, it's way more work for you. And you, you came back every time and hit a home run. And Brian, too. Both you guys are an amazing Great team in this budget process. I actually cannot be happier. So thank you. And Grant, I want to add to it saying this uh, project description is much easier to explain to the community what they're paying for. And I think that was why we, we wished it. So thank you very much. I well, thank cool. you for having me do it because it kind of forced the issue. And I think it is a big improvement. So thank you very much. Uh, thank Have you. a good evening. Thanks, Grant. Thanks, Grant. Yeah, and just a reminder to the public that while this is a uh, new district uh, or a new board voting for a new district, uh, this budget that we're approving will apply for the schools within Montpelier and Roxbury. Um, so for the Roxbury residents, this will be the budget for the Roxbury Village School. Um, and for Montpelier, this will continue to be the budget for the three schools in Montpelier, mm -hmm. but obviously under one umbrella. So just mm -hmm. in case there's any confusion in the public out there that this is the, this budget uh, will cover um, the Rock Montpelier and Roxbury schools for the next fiscal year when these two will be. And, um, and it'll be voted at town meeting day mm -hmm. in the same mm -hmm. way that at least in Montpelier has been and typical and, and same in Roxbury. Sure. Yes. Yes. Yep. Mm -hmm. And it will be one vote. It, the votes will all be counted, uh, but they will be broken out separately so um, the towns can see how each town voted. But mm -hmm. the votes will be counted. Keep it with the mm -hmm. um, and again, thank you. Uh, thank you all for uh, the great work on the budget and the bond. Um, so item number five, I think, is, is pretty quick. Uh, we have. Uh, discussed a few meetings ago, uh, putting together a uh, transportation committee with some members of the public. Uh, Lisa and I have done some reach out to the community. We have uh, four community members that we would like to uh, propose beyond that committee, and then also uh, we have a uh, first date uh, for. Uh, the meeting of that committee, uh, the four members are uh, Ann Watson, who's a civic council member and also a teacher at the school, uh, the Ken Jones, who we all know and love, uh, <laughs> but in addition to being a former member of this board, uh, he right now is uh, working very closely with uh, 
the net zero uh, mm -hmm. Vermont and Sustainable Montpelier initiative, which is obviously very concerned about uh, cleaning up Montpelier's transportation sector. Uh, Jim Hutton, who is a, uh, a resident of Montpelier uh, and has, uh, with a middle school student, has been very interested in um, the transportation issue, and he also lives in a section of town uh, where walking and biking to school is difficult, mm -hmm. uh, and uh, with you know, middle school and high school students, uh, transportation is an issue. Uh, and the final person is uh, Kara Robicek, uh, who is the executive director of the Vermont Energy Education Program, who also has uh, children in the district um, and is very concerned about sustainability uh, and uh, finding ways to uh, connect uh, children to uh, educational experiences that uh, improve energy use in the environment. So I think those are four great people. We also have um, uh, sorry. You know, uh, Chris from Green Mountain Transit, who uh, has uh, agreed to attend meetings and to help us work with Green Mountain Transit. Um, unless people feel differently, in part because I don't believe he's a Montpelier City resident, um, I think just having him attend as a, an advisory capacity rather than as an actual member makes sense. Um, but he said he'd be willing to be an actual member if that's what we wanted. So um, that's the slate, and I would need a motion on the slate and some discussion. Michelle. I move that we approve these transportation committee members. A second? I'll second that. And Any I discussion? just check in with you about Kara because she's going away. We have to, I, Kara and I have discussed that. Okay. Uh, we are going to try to structure the meeting so she can participate by Skype, and she says okay. she's willing to do that um, from Scotland. Okay. Uh, she Ooh. is. She is coming <laughs> back. Yeah, yeah. She's she's coming back. At I the mean, end it's of this, it's six months, but it's, it's sort months. of like the term in which you're doing the work. Yeah. So. Uh, she said she is willing to participate by Skype um, if she misses a meeting or two. Uh, I figured you guys had it figured out. Yeah, we had we had it figured out. Yeah. Smart check. Thanks, thanks to the mm -hmm. members for being willing to serve. Yeah. Uh, so we need a vote. Yes. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Oh, great, thank you. Um, and I believe that. Is there a time for that meeting that you wanted to, to meet? Oh. Is uh, a time? Because I know we need to mourn it. I, it was in my. I think I'll, okay, I think I'll double check. Yeah, I think it's 5 30. We also need a location. That I can get. Okay. Um, I think it's 5.30. I'll, I'll go back and get it. Sorry. Okay. It's either 5.30 or 3.35. Okay. okay. I think it's 5.30 or 7.30. Um, motion to adjourn. I move we adjourn. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye.